What's up guys? Nick and Matt with Limitless Motorsports Garage. We're here today. We're going to try to work on the Fox. Hopefully get the transmission stuff and the motor and everything put in. Uh, the exhaust isn't ready. I went to a guy. He said it'd probably be three or four days before he could get to it. So, you know, whatever. We'll get to it Monday. Um, we got Matt's CRX here. So tell us a little bit about it and uh, what your plans are, man. And long term and short term and you know all that jazz well for right now i picked up the car for fifteen hundred dollars it's got a uh d15 b2 dpi engine in it it's sold to two fuel injectors um right now the only thing i've really done to it is i threw these 17s on i got from uh, my buddy cameron um, these are some sweet sweet ass rims man some jdm actual 5z wheels. i gotta find some center caps for them though uh put an exhaust on it Put my hood spacers on i haven't really done much to it yet i've only had the car for a few weeks um kind of just bought it as a daily but given how the weight of the car is only 2600 pounds uh decided to kind of take it and swap out the d15 b2 and put a z6 uh, 1.6 liter vtec in it do a mild build and possibly even a turbo um given its lightweight and the fact that it is a two-seater um uh, Kind of more or less leaning towards just building it as a track car and take it over to the drag strip. But for right now, I mean, it doesn't really need much. I gotta do a little bit. Uh, I need to put a new radiator in it, uh, probably a new thermostat as well. It's, it's smoking just a little bit. One of the injectors is stuck, but for 1500 $1, bucks and the condition that it's in, I think I picked it up for a pretty good steal. Yeah. I know the paint is not like factory, and you can tell in some places, but. I really do like this red. I mean, it's it looks nice on this car. I'm digging the red. I won't lie to you. Um, there's just some spots where the people who painted it, they, I mean, you can kind of see where they didn't mask off the car properly. Yeah. Like this right here is all supposed to be black. Um, there's two cover pieces above the, the tail lights. Yeah, see. Yeah, they, uh, that's they, on, that's on like everything I've got to. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just I'm missing this piece right here. It's only missing a couple of small pieces, but if you look into it, for 89 man it's it's really not in that bad of shape at all the only thing that like sets apart or stands out when i come up to it is like i see this that back panel right there but the way they did it they did it in such a they did it in such a, a good way that like i knowing cars i know it's not that stock but i mean if i was a normal person i'd look at it down oh it looks good yeah it looks factory you know um the only thing it really needs uh, i gotta find a cargo cover for the back of it and the inside door handle cover for right here and this piece right here that's really all that it's missing and the fact that it's an 89 it's still running it's all original other than the wheels i i, I couldn't stand the little 13 inch bicycle tires that were on this car um i mean the guy put new brakes new suspension underneath it. it's got new axles um i did swap out the fuel filter on it yesterday uh the fuel filter was like clogged man i, I took it off i emptied it out it was like full of rust and grime um but it seems to be running better with the new fuel filter on there. I need to change the plugs, the wires, and the radiator and thermostat. And I'm going to flush the coolant out. And I'm just trying to keep it running for right now until I can pick up my swap and get it swapped out. What about long term? Long term? Um, that's that's more or less what I'm thinking is it's going to be a drag car. Um, I'm, I'm going to get that Z6. I'm going to tear it down. I'm going to build it, do a Vitara build on it. If um, most of you don't know what a Vitara is, um, just kind of do a little bit of research. I mean, I'll be talking for hours about it. But... Essentially, it's just I'm gonna go with standard size pistons, uh, custom length rods, uh, new valve train, and a Grady, like actual Grady D series turbo kit that I found for this car. Um, all in all, I can actually build the car for less than $2,500. And I'm not chasing numbers with this thing. Three, 400 horsepower in this car will be all I need. Because I mean, if you actually check the stamp on the inside of the door here, the curb weight is right there. 2625 pounds so lightweight man that's what a lot of people like to do with these cars they like to k swap them b swap them uh there's even uh, a few of them out there that i've seen that have uh the j35 out of the the 3.5 liter out of the odyssey in it or the even the uh accord mm -hmm. and man these these little cars are getting buggy truck guys i think i talked a little bit about it before i don't want to make it super crazy or anything Really, I just want to do a couple little mods to it, make it, you know, bump up the horsepower, bump up the torque a little bit with it. I really would like to put some stuff in it, like a new Mishimoto um, intercooler, you know, something a little stronger, maybe a little bit bigger turbo. Uh, I think uh, new injectors, stronger injectors maybe, 
There's a couple of mods that I read about it. I want to do, you know, bump it up a little bit, make it a little stronger. Um, I gotta redo the suspension someday. Yeah, I know it's got a little bit of play in it right now. Plus, you hit bumps, it, I mean, it goes like this, and you're having to fight it. So, you know, gotta get some stuff for it. It's a workhorse, it is what it is, but I do want to have a little fun with it. You know, you get it up in third gear and start start trying to get in the fourth, and you, you know, you put your foot down, this thing can be pretty quick for, you know, 7,000 pounds. So. so as far as the white one goes, I, I really want to, I wanted to make this my drag car, or an autocross, either one, and then make the Fox something like a family car. And with the, the heads in this one going out, I mean, it it really threw a, a wrench into things. <laughs> but uh, it, it really threw a wrench into the thing, to the works, and uh I just for right now it's just gonna sit as far as long term yeah because the truck is kind of mild long term but this one I, I really would like to get a built 351 in there with like one of those dark blocks i mean i'll never make this kind of power but they're rated for like 2,000 horsepower i think jesus christ so i mean yeah you spend three thousand dollars for a block versus you know maybe two thousand for another block which can only hold you know a couple hundred like this block will crack in half at 500. And there's nothing you can do to stop that. And this is an aluminum cast block? Yes. I think so. It just, it, it is what it is. I'm not going to be able to dump the money in it right now. I really, I wasn't going to take that transmission out, but it's something that I was wanting automatic for the Fox body. And I was going to keep the you know manual on this, and this is going to be my fun car, and then it died. So maybe in the future I'll source another transmission, take the T5 out. I know it sounds like a lot of work. And it is in a way, but it's not. Especially, you know, we had I hadn't worked on the things in a while, so I, I start taking things loose and I forget about things. And so we did struggle a little bit last week, but once we figured the, you know, the two or three things that were holding us up, I mean, it, it, it went like butter. Uh, so yeah, so short term, hopefully get it running. Maybe put the T5 back in it and get it, you know, where I can drive it. Suspension's pretty much perfect in it. I mean, I've had it for five years. It's still, you know, it's still tight as can be, and, and I've not had any problems besides having to do an alignment. I had to replace one piece, but I mean, you know, a little downtime, five, you know, what a day. What does the fox say? Nothing right now. Nothing right now. And so, short term, and I did talk about this the other day, I really wanted to get the fox just running. If there's a Mustang event, I know I'm not going to get it running by then. You know, fingers crossed I can get it running maybe with some help, you know, work an extra two, three days a week instead. Because I only usually have about one day to work. So hopefully working two to three days a week, I'm going to be able to put some time into this and get it running. The biggest thing we're going to have to deal with is maybe fuel lines, brake lines, and wiring. The rest of it, I mean, it, it's throw the motor in, throw the trans in, throw the new fuel tank in, but I'm ready to go. But I short term was just get it running. I have a 5 that goes in it, and we're going to do that. We're going to do the T5, so that way it's something simple and quick and ready to go. I've got all the parts. We can take parts off this car if we need to. But long term, and I did talk about this a little bit, I do want to do one of those 2015 Mustang motors out of the EcoBoost. Because it's 30-something miles a gallon, stock, 330 horsepower, four-cylinder turbo. I was reading an article about building those up because, again, it's, I've said in the last video, Nobody seems to, to really build those up, they're, and they're relatively cheap. Now, I looked online, I said, I think, 2200 for the whole assembly with a transmission. So I looked it up, and then apparently prices have raised since then. I'm assuming millions of people saw our video and said, hey, we got to get one of those. <laughs> but no, in all, in all reality, I must have just found a really good price. I, I think I found the motor for 2500 which is still not a bad price. I mean, considering I think you can get some other JDM motors, you know, some of the higher end stuff like 2JZs, I think I've seen them around 2500 maybe with a transmission. Um, but I really want to do that because, like I said, you know, 330 stock, 30 miles a gallon, this thing would be faster than my white car and be better mileage. Not to mention it's actually lighter than the white car, too. Exactly. And, you know, I... I, I don't have the money to do it, but again, long term, I would probably want to replace these doors 
the hood, the fender, basically every removable panel on this car with carbon fiber. You can get them relatively cheap for these kind of, kinds of cars and the, and the white one. I mean, you'll shed panels off, and that will just make it ridiculously lighter. So I do want to have a full interior. I do want to have a full working family car, something that I can, you know, have friends, family jump in, and we can go to the store. You know, we can do whatever. I mean, I love the hatch. I've always loved these. And you can take and fold these back seats down. And I always thought it would be nice to go on a camping trip and like, hey, I can sit here and look at the stars, but I have 330 horsepower. And then from what I was reading, I think you can put less than $3,000 in it and you can bump it up to 400 horsepower. Now, I know you're going to lose a little, you know, mileage on that, but still, I mean, I was getting 25 on the white one and that, I'm happy with that. You know, it's got more power and mileage than the V6 does that comes out of my my other car that I've been driving, which is a Sable. So that's just kind of mind-boggling to me, and I, that's what I want to do with it in the long term. So, yeah. But I, otherwise, if we're going to get to this, we have to, we have to take the transmission and put it back together. We have to use RTV and seal it up properly. We then have to hopefully get the motor and transient today. I do have just about everything I need. I can't get the seal in. I do need some assembly lube to make it per uh, perfect and assemble it perfectly. Um, the exhaust is not ready. I do have a couple spares back here we can throw on if we need to to get it running. But hopefully by the end of the day, if we're not if we're done with the motor and transmission, we're going to look at the wiring and make sure that there's no cuts, no exposed wires, no anything, so that way the wiring will work. We also have to figure out exactly how the wiring is going to work because it is mating a 86 to a 94 as far as I know there's not there's only two things in the interior that run to the motor and that would be the gauges because it has to run the gauges to like a water temperature and all that the uh, the speedometer itself is cable driven so I'm going to see how that's going to work I think I have the cable I may have to get a new one but I think I'm just gonna run cable driven to the transmission it is you know a manual so we'll see how that works. I do have the actual sensor somewhere, somewhere around here, but I don't think I could switch that over without getting a dash out of a new one. Um, like I said, that's gonna be one of the hardest things about this thing, because we're gonna have to figure out the wiring. I think it's gonna be pretty straightforward, except for the interior, the brakes, and the fuel lines. Like I said, we may take off a lot one. It, it just depends on time. If we get most of it done, we say, well, we, we're having a trouble with the brake lines, we may just take everything off the bottom. So, yeah. Let's finish this up. Hey guys, so we've been working a little bit. We uh, cleaned up the mating surfaces and uh, tried to scrape off as much of that gasket as we could. It's like some RTV stuff that they used on there. And you could see a little bit in carbon or whatever on there, but I mean, I've scraped it pretty good. So, we uh, sprayed this whole thing down the brake cleaner because it was filthy. But I mean, now, I mean, look how relatively clean it is. We actually used a plastic scraper to get this off. We didn't use a metal scraper or a razor blade that we would can gouge it up. Cause, I mean, the plastic took it off pretty well. This is aluminum. So, I mean, if we had, we had to have been extremely careful, and it would have probably taken longer. So the plastic scraper, I mean, it tore itself up. But, I mean, hey, one use, a dollar or something, whatever. You know, it works. Just keep that in mind. Whatever surface you're using on, especially if you have to clean it up, like any kind of mating surface, um, be leery of, like, what material that the, the things are made of. Like, whether it's cast aluminum, cast iron. Um, you don't want to take a like a rough razor blade or something or like a wire brush and go scraping away and gouge up the surfaces and eventually like you know risk it causing it to leak later on because you like scratch the surfaces yeah. or the gasket's not mating up properly. So we've jacked the Mustang up. We got it up in the air. Now we're going to get hopefully the motor put in. We'll put the uh, the gasket sealer on there first and get that thing because it takes 90 minutes to sit then we can torque it down and then we'll get over here and we'll have this uh while we're waiting we'll have the motor and transmission or the motor and we'll put it in and then later on today hopefully we'll get the transmission put in so when we're doing the gasket sealer we need to go around and we need to do a not a super huge bead because this is going to squish out we have to go around it like so and then when we're done, we'll have to also go around the bolt holes. So these six right here, they do not go into the case itself. 
they don't need to have a good thick glob on there. You don't want to put the sealant directly on the bolt from my understanding. I learned this information from another guy who rebuilds them so I'll link his video in the description and uh, you can check it out. He's a master T5 rebuilder, transmission rebuilder, whatever. But on the top ones you do want to get it a little bit closer so a little bit of that sealant will get on the bolt and so that way when you thread it in you don't want too much because it will act as a, as he said, it will act as a ram and then cause the case to split apart. So right now we are going to apply a small, a small, there we go, better than that though. In great words of Charlie Sheen, let's do a line. All right. I mean it's about that size, but there we go. Now the tube he was using, and he that's why he was using it because it had like a little trigger on there. But I almost like a grease gun style. Yeah, but it also costs like twenty twenty eight dollars. Say yeah, you can get that industrial size. Perks of working at shops, you yeah. get that industrial size stuff. I see why he likes that trigger. It's a lot easier on the hands, more stable. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like wanting to apply too much or too little. Yeah, with the trigger, you can kind of control about how much you're putting out. Should have spent like 20 bucks. Yeah, trial and error. You know that for next time. Hopefully, they're in the next time. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> Knock on the <laughs> Sorry if I'm blocking the camera, audience. Uh, this is the best thing for me to come at. I'm not touch up a little bit over here. I'm like an artist. I'm Picasso. For every teenage female with an iPhone nowadays. <laughs> Look at me. I can Snapchat. I'm an artist. And then we also, as I said, want to go around these bolt holes. I might get a little bit dab right there. Dab. The dab will do. Do a dollop of daisy. <laughs> like a boss on a cake. It's one tasty looking fucking cake. Now with metal shavings. No, those are sprinkles. <laughs> My exploding cupcakes. The secret is gunpowder, but I'll never tell. I mean, when we, when we like bolt them together, it'll sandwich yeah. it pretty well. I just don't want to leak because then we're going to have to take the whole transmission apart again. Oh, shit. What are you talking about? Use a syringe. <laughs> Put that some of that in a syringe. and. <laughs> I'm going to double check my work. A little bit extra on this outside. He said that they don't go through the case right here, but I want to make sure. UPS, why you not deliver car parts? about good right there all right now I have to get the small parts I don't know what these are called exactly but uh, this basically works as as shown you put this spring up in here and then the ball it rests like that and I'll show you when we get over here and uh, put it back together Okay, I'm trying to remember. I think you put the ball in there. Put 
Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Right, I don't know how to go. Ooh. That's on my table. This ball has to go down into a neutral position, which is down in here, as shown. And then try to get the spring on top of it. And do like so. and loaded. So these are the what I was talking about. I have a little sealant that goes on them. Take and go ahead and throw these down in there. We're not going to torque these down because this has to we'll get them on tight enough. Yeah, just finger tight for right now because that, uh, that sealant has to cure for 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, this one doesn't. Uh, that's right. These top ones, they don't need the, se the thread locker. They just, it's just the center ones yeah now they also <laughs> we did it <laughs> we had to drop the whole the whole uh, front of the car for this to clear because when it was jacked up all the way it was wanting to uh, not clear it this yeah it liked like four inches of clearing so hopefully this is the last time we put this thing in here I mean it's been in here like three times and for various reasons I have pulled it out and put it back in so now we just have to get the nuts put on, which I have them. Yeah. These nuts. And uh, we will put the nuts on. And then we got to finish the transmission. Actually, no, it's ready. We just got to grab the stuff off of the white one. We got to grab the, uh, the pressure plate, the actual clutch, grab all that stuff, and then start putting it on this motor. I, I, I can feel it. I can feel it coming. So, I think see. it's doable. I think we'll, we can get it done. As long as we keep at it, we can get this done. I mean, we cleaned it up and got the transmission ready to go today. Oh, yeah. The, and we, we cleaned that tail shaft so good. It was like caked and, and old fluid. And, and Years worth of grime. Yeah, and it's it's beautiful looking now. So we've, uh, Matt sprayed this off, got all the, all the grime and dirt off of it, and then we got a new hose because it was all degraded and old. So... Now all we gotta do is just work about wiring later. I think we'll get to that today. We'll go look at the wiring and then tomorrow maybe we'll see what we can do. So where are we at right now? So we've got the motor in the car. We've got the car set back up so we can get the transmission put under there. We actually got all the parts out here and we have been cleaning them and making sure you know everything's good to go. We've got the um, the block plate that goes in between the motor and everything else, we've got it clean sitting over there. We got the uh, we got the flywheel and back of the pressure plate cleaned off because they had a little bit of rust and a little bit of wool and, and dirt and everything. So now the only thing that we've noticed is these are the old bolts and yeah they may have stretched out a little bit. Let's see the size. So it's about one and one sixteenth inch. I, I think Reading from everything, they said that the uh, the stock bolt or the bolts that you can buy, like from ARP, are, are one full inch, but these are under an inch. So to be on the safe side, we're going to buy some new ones. We're going to have them shipped. Um, possibly, we may run down to Atlanta to the uh, the Summit Racing down there and pick up some bolts, but it just depends on you know how tomorrow goes. I got to do some budgeting. So if we don't. This is the end of the video, and we'll see you next week. But if we do, let's keep working. I mean, fuck, why not? So it's a couple days later, but to you it's going to be the same episode. Uh, we had to quit because I needed to order some new flywheel bolts, but uh, we have them in, in now. So I'll be able to put the flywheel in, the pressure plate, the clutch, and hopefully the transmission today while I have a little off time. I had to get this painted as well. Um, it is a little tacky in places, but 
the guy that welded this in, he did not do a fantastic job, and so, plus he didn't paint over his work as you should when you're doing this. Um, so, it ended up being a little bit rusty. There's actually a little hole in the floor over here. Um, actually two of them. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but yeah, right there's one of them. So, we have to get this finished and, uh, like I said, hopefully get the transmission in today because that would be nice to have everything ready, ready to go for, uh, this next coming week where we can maybe get the wiring and fuel lines run and everything like that. So, yeah. <laughs> On today's episode, we show you how to thread bolts. You just tap it in. Just tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap it in. <laughs> now, he said they don't use... Oh, yeah, that's right. They use red thread locker. Okay. Red thread lock. If it recommended by a man with a transmission shop, I would do it. Uh, I'll use this a bit of an eye over here. Oh shit! Oh, oh shit! Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, we almost suffered catastrophic failure. Go! Dang! Mm -hmm.